from Serenity. Please join me in reciting the prayer for which this show is named. God grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. The primary mission of Serenity is to share with you both information and inspiration. If we are to have peace on earth and goodwill toward all, that peace must begin within the individual heart of those who are seeking peace and goodwill within. Today I am talking about a program we are initiating in the community called HOW Inc. HOW Inc. is an acronym for health opportunities and wellness for people everywhere doing business as HOW Inc. at St. Stephen's Community Church. We are a not-for-profit, tax-exempt, community-based organization located at 1007 Kimberly Drive in Lansing, Michigan. The purpose of HOW Inc. at St. Stephen's is to address the total health, spiritual, physical, emotional, social, and mental issues of people everywhere. We are using from Holy Writ, do you not know that your body is the temple of the Almighty God? How Inc. has four primary program emphases. Health and wellness disparities, as we think about in our communities, the rising health issues with diabetes, breast cancer, hypertension, HIV, AIDS, and others that will be identified as we progress in developing How Inc. The second emphasis is the reentry and reintegration of the formerly incarcerated. Number three, the Lonnie D. Johnson Health Education Memorial, during which time we will be focusing in on prostate cancer awareness. And last but certainly not least, the National Restoration to Military Families, addressing their returning, readjustment, grief management, and anger management concerns. As you will see in the backdrop, a quilt that was created by, handmade by, Delilah Morrow, who is a stone's throw, so to speak, from the Camp Lejeune military base. And she, in 2009, created this quilt to show America the numbers of individuals, of service members who have, have lost their lives, who have been killed in action during the Operation Iraq Freedom Conflict. And the reason we are focusing in on that first conflict, or the reason at the time, that we focused in on that conflict is because President Obama declared that conflict ended in September of 09. And so therefore we wanted to betray uh, this quilt as a reminder and we hope someday to actually gift the quilt to President Obama to betray the numbers of individuals who have given their life so that we could have peace in America. Each of the numbers on each of the states represents the number of individuals killed as of May of 2010. For an example, in the upper far right hand, uh, left hand corner, if you're facing the quilt in right hand corner from, from my perspective, you'll see that 92 service members lost their lives from the state of Washington. We lost more in the state of Texas than uh, second uh, in the state of Texas and then third um, in California, or I should say we lost 471 in California, which is our greatest number. Our second number would be 415. 
And so what we had in mind to do with the families or under number four of Howe's program emphasis is to not only address the grief management of the survivors, of the husbands, of the wives, of the siblings, of the parents uh, that are remaining as a result of uh, those killed in action, and, and to give them uh, grieving tools. Uh, one of the things that we don't do well in America is talk about death. And when we experience death, do not know that there is a process to get from uh, anger, which is the first step of having lost your loved one, all the way through to acceptance. Now, when we talk about acceptance, that in itself is a, is a lifelong uh, process because losing a loved one uh, is always, always leaves a, a hole in uh, our hearts. But also for the service members who have lost a buddy, uh, having a grieving process for them as well as having a process to share with service members who are suffering from anger, anger from, from, from losing their buddies, uh, anger from being in a hostile and violent environment uh, for a, an extended period of time, anger uh, regarding individuals who have taken, uh, whose buddies have taken their lives, who have committed suicide, and even anger over buddies who have returned to America and have taken the lives of their families and then taken their own lives uh, because their anger issues are not resolved. We'll also be talking under the National Restoration to Military Families um, Unit uh, the whole idea of how we might want to consider talking about, to and about our service members. For an example, it is my hope that I will be able to send a picture of the quilt to the ministers in the Lansing, Greater Lansing area, as well as throughout the state of Michigan, explaining to them things that you don't do uh, when you are having, for an example, a memorial service. Uh, this, this, is, this is a very serious thing for service members. One of the things that comes to my mind immediately is uh, asking someone who has served in the military to, to lead that service for you because a service member knows more than a civilian what is helpful for them if there is going to be a memorial service. Uh, another thing that I found very interesting in my research is that if it is against the law, quote unquote, for the American flag to touch the earth, then it is also illegal for the earth to touch the American flag. What do I mean? If a flag, if a, if a casket is draped with a flag, when we do the ashes to ashes, earth to earth, dust to dust, we don't do that on the flag. You can do it on the casket, but not on uh, the flag. Now these may be very minor things, but they are important things to a service member. Uh, another thing that comes to my mind is if you are living with a service member and you are attempting to awaken them for breakfast, for lunch, for coffee, for a walk, for whatever reasons, what you want to do is gently rub them at their feet or at their legs and not go into the room and holler at them because they are coming back from a violent envir environment. So if they hear loud noise, well, they're going to come up. They're going to sit up swinging. And uh, one final thing is, you know, be, be aware of loud noises around uh, 4th of July time because we come back, and I speak from experience. I am a Gulf War veteran. Uh, retired U.S. Navy chaplain, and so I speak from experience. And if I walk, even 21 years later, uh, having returned from the Gulf War, if I walk by a suspicious or an abandoned bag, I become very nervous because I don't know what's in that bag. And we're talking about 25 years later, not 21 months later, which is the situation for many of our service members who are 
uh, returning. Uh, when we talk about health and wellness disparities under How Inc., and basically I'm also trying to introduce to you this program, when we talk about health and wellness disparities, uh, it, it, it is, should be noted that the majority of the individuals in this country who are contracting HIV AIDS are African American females, straight African American females. Why is this? Because some of our partners are sleeping on both sides of the bed. And we call that the down low. And, and, and also, when people are in prison, a lot of times they will engage in same gender sexual activities, not because they are a same gender loving person, but because that is the way of prison life. Uh, the third way that many of our African American women are contracting HIV AIDS is their partners may be using dirty ne needles and that, that's another way of transferring HIV AIDS to uh, a person that is without HIV AIDS. And it is important that we talk about this not in the context, not in the context text of same gender loving folk. That is to say the gay, the lesbian, the bisexual and the transgender community. That is not the, the, the focus or the, the impetus from which we speak. We are speaking of HIV AIDS apart from, not in addition to, but apart from the GLBTQ community because that is going down. The infections are going down in the GLBTQ community, but rising in the uh, heterosexual or straight black women community. Number two, uh, the re-entry and reintegration of the formerly uh, incarcerated. Uh, this is something that the community has to be involved in because these men and women that are being released from prison are coming back to our communities and it doesn't make sense for us to ignore this. What makes sense is for us to embrace them as members of the community and be a part of their healing process, to be a part of helping them with their, reconnect with their, their, their personal families, helping them to uh, find jobs, having ready, particularly in our faith-based organizations, having ready a list of places where they can go to get social skills and, and social help and, and also educational um, opportunities. And then last but not least, or number three in our list of emphasis is the Lonnie D. Johnson Health Education Memorial. Prostate Cancer Awareness is the third program emphasis in How Inc. At the services of Lonnie D. Johnson in, uh, earlier this year, there were probably four or five hundred people in attendance, and we announced at his service that we would establish a Lonnie D. Johnson Health Education Memorial about prostate cancer awareness because he, in many ways, was the Lansing community guru on that subject. Uh, he would go wide and far talking about prostate cancer awareness because he was, at that time, a prostate cancer uh, uh, survivor. And so we have established this with that in mind and once a year we are hoping to have a Lonnie D. Johnson Health Education Memorial Prostate Cancer Awareness Program we will certainly let you know when that is. We are going to involve social services. We're going to involve health administrators. We're going to involve physicians. And we would also hope that the community would be interested in coming and being a part of that. Last but not least, we want to introduce to you uh, a little bit about the next taping, the next show that we will be presenting under the rubric, Serenity, with Dr. Reverend P.J. Banks Anderson. At our next showing, we will be talking about the six proposals that are on the ballot for the upcoming election time. 
And the reason we are talking about this is not to advocate for or advocate against any of the ballot ballots, but to provide information so that when you go to the polls, you go as an informed voter. This is probably one of the most critical times in the history of United States politics, particularly in the African American community. We do not endorse one candidate over another, but we do encourage you to take advantage of the freedom to vote. It is our ancestors in particular that gave blood, that gave their life for us to have the right to vote. Please, I implore you, do not be distracted by the lies. Do not be distracted by the hype. Do not be distracted by the propaganda. Remember that the President of the United States is the President of all citizens and not just the pastor of a local congregation. So please be mindful that this is an important time in the life of our community. It, we are duty bound by the blood, sweat, and tears of our ancestors to go and vote. And so, let me again introduce to you uh, the, the idea that the next show will be about the six proposals that are on the ballot, and our guest will be the Reverend Michael Cooper from Pilgrim Congregational Church, United Church of Christ, also a board member of Inclusive Justice in Michigan, and he will explain what that means, as well as Dr. Charles J. Corley, who is an Associate Professor of Criminal Justice at Michigan State University. We thank you for this time that we have had together, and we ask you uh, to look forward to our visit into your home again, and we hope that you will include in your daily prayers, God, grant me the serenity to accept the things that I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Until next time, serenity. Thank you.